you've heard of mental health, you've heard of therapists and, and going to see a, a counselor for, for therapy, but have you heard of art therapy? Have you thought about what exactly is art therapy? How is it used in a therapy session? And so today my guest I have is Samara M. Church, and I'm really looking forward to being able to talk more about that. How is art therapy used in a therapy session? What type of clients would benefit from art therapy and what exactly goes on in art therapy? And so we're going to be watching and looking at this coming right up after this. All right. Welcome to the Mental Health Today show. My name is John Cordray and I'm a licensed therapist and the host of the show. And you heard me talk about watching this. You can watch this now, my show, the podcast, Mental Health Today show podcast on YouTube music. So if you're on YouTube, go there and you can look at all of the new episodes on there. And by the way, you can just listen too. It's really interesting. If you have a YouTube music, go on there. You can either watch the episodes or you can listen to them. As usual, though, if you've been listening to this for any length of time, you know that I'm everywhere else that podcasts are available as well. So uh, let's get into this episode. And like I said, right at the beginning, we're going to be talking about art therapy. So art therapy and creative expression for mental health. And I'm going to be talking with my guest, Samara M. Church. She is an art therapist. And let's get to it. Samara, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's um, not only am I a big fan, but I do feel uh, very excited to bring this conversation to your platform. Um, I'm really just so grateful. Again, thank you for having me. Well, you're welcome. And I'm really excited to, to, to dig into this because this is an area I think not a lot of people know about. They Maybe they've heard of art therapy. Some people might have to be thinking of play therapy, but it's not play therapy. So <laughs> I'm really interested in learning from you. What exactly is art therapy? When is it used in a therapy session? Who is it used mm. for? But before we get to all of that, I would love to know, tell us a little bit about your story. Tell me, like, how did you get from before an art therapist to be an art therapist? What is that like? Good question. And, you know, I, I think even asking something like that is really appreciated because I know that we before we become who we are and how we're settled in a profession that we do, there's always something beforehand that really makes or breaks that situation for us. Um, I think me being myself in my own journey and having a lot of that exposure to therapy, I mean, I'm also being mindful of age range and like, you know, the kind of uh, generations we're in right now. So I think without, I guess, divulging too much about that in, where I stand. I mean, I am a millennial. I'll put that out there. But back in the 90s and back in even the early 2000s, therapy, at least for me and how it was exposed to me, was something that I guess just in my own background and family, it, it was a little more hush hush because I don't think a lot of people really understood how to really access something like that and what it meant when you did access something like that. So with my own journey and figuring out for me, it was always my emotions and just like my mood and just everything that um, I needed extra support in. Um, I also, it, it's hard to get support from someone or from a group of people who don't really understand those things themselves. Me really coming in and knowing that I wanted to give back to the community in some way. I was always a very creative person. I am still very creative. I dabbled a lot with theater and going into that kind of drama, allowing me to be more, a little bit more expressive, like verbally with my actions and really putting a definition out there. Um, with that being said, I also really loved art um, and I still really love art. I think for me, what really stemmed my direction to art therapy, I knew I wanted to do something with the therapeutic world. I didn't necessarily, <laughs> not that anything is bad about this, but I didn't necessarily want to follow the trend coming from New York, um, having that social worker background. I wanted to do a little bit more. I really wanted something that would allow me to stand out as the therapist that I aspire to be um, in that kind of sense. Me also having such a fondness of what therapy could do for people, I really wanted there to be a natural outlet 
for those who maybe still don't know much about therapy, who really don't know much about how they can explore their mental health in a way that's um, less frightening. And I think doing that with art therapy just made a lot of sense. And when I was an undergrad um, in Binghamton University, which is in upstate New York, um, there was someone that came in to talk about art therapy as like a grad program, already being a psych major it and just minoring in studio art because I was taking so many painting classes. I was like, why not, you know, cash that in? <laughs> um, well, you know, with that being said, I noticed just what art does for me. And I noticed that there's so much potential in what it does for others. And I'm a big believer in there being at least three things that bring people together and that really utilize, like that really bring us all in harmony, which is food, of course, um, and also music and art, if you think about it, because when you tie in all of those things or when you tie in the food aspect with something that's visually and you know, with the audio, it's just so pleasing and beautiful. It just creates this awesome space. Um, and it just alleviates a lot of the things that we maybe not like about a space. And I think with that being said, I knew all these things and I really wanted a way to tap into that. So over time, I've been continuing to explore how art therapists and how an art therapy component can be utilized in these kind of therapeutic spaces and such. I think that answered a lot of that in regards to where I find my own story. I think that I try to be, um, I allow myself to be very humble because I know that there's so much to learn out there. There's so much to hear from a person's, I guess, not even persona, but just like their views on what has meant something to them. Art really allows that to uh, play a, a, you know, a role with letting people see things for what they are. And you can see the same picture and have like a tremendous amount of different reviews on it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And and I really appreciated when you were mentioning the three main areas that really connect people. You know, it's food, good food, music, <laughs> right? And art. And, you know, we are, I believe we are very creative people. We may not, we not be, may not be artists. We may not be able to play an instrument or sing like a lot of people do, but we can appreciate it. Bingo. Whether you are a, a, a professional artist or not, you can appreciate good art. Whether or not you are a, a professional singer, you can appreciate good music. Right. And, and I think that's what you're talking about. And, and you're tapping into art therapy taps into that creative side yes. of a person, even if maybe the person that you're seeing and talking with may not be artistic per se, you're tapping into their creativity. Exactly. And I think that is really the power of it. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And I think also the amount of times I've had people in just a room or individually tell me you know, I'm not artistic, right? And I would say, no, I didn't know that until now, but there's a lot of ways that we could really use what I'm about to introduce you to. Um, there's a lot of ways that I would really encourage the people that I work alongside with to just think outside the box, like to think out of the norm of what they've been told is their norm for so long. Um, even just simple ways to utilize a pen, which I just randomly had in front of me, um, ways to utilize the paper that they're using the pen not with, you know, and how they're really putting some physicality to what they're doing um, while they're processing a lot of the thought behind it, if that makes sense. Um, but I, I, I think for myself, I always try to reassure that it's not even the result of the product. We're big believers, our therapists, that it's really about the journey that got you to be interested in trying something new and then really utilizing it in this visual that you could actually relate to. And you know what? I also tell people that they're not always going to love the art that they create, but they're going to really appreciate down, you know, hands down, like they're going to love how they got to that place and mm -hmm. how they understood in a more visual sense. It's like seeing is believing, right? When you see something, you could fully believe it. Um, and you don't feel necessarily like you're crazy for seeing it and I even say that term loosely because when we describe like oh my gosh I, I knew I saw that when you saw 
that thing, like meaning the artwork, and you see what I see, I don't feel as much like I'm in some way out of touch of what I'm thinking about. So when I work with people in art therapy, my biggest goal is to really allow them to know that this is their process, how they use that pen, how they use that art material. It's for them and they don't technically have to answer to anyone else on how they did it the way they did it. They really could make it their own and have that unique connection to that process, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And, and so I'm, I would imagine you've had a lot of people say, and you mentioned it earlier, I'm not a very good artist. I don't, I don't think this is going to be helpful for me. So if they're not, if they don't think they are good at an art uh, or at anything that you're wanting to try to help them express their creativity, do you find that that is a barrier? Like if the individual believes they have fill in the blank. I'm not good enough. I, I'm not a good artist. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm terrible. What would you I say think, to that person? Ooh, yeah. I don't know. Actually, I do know. Um, <laughs> that's part of a natural block in general when it comes to therapy. When you go into a session, you hear a client say, oh, I don't know if talking about this is really going to help. I don't feel really good about this situation, but I feel hopeless about it, or I feel like there, I've tried everything and I don't really know what more to do. There's a lot of that natural component when a person will say, oh, I'm really not good at art. But if someone like me were to come in and reassure them that it's not about the art, it's about you being open to trying something new and doing something that you're really hoping will bring out a great quality in you. You would never have known that you're doing this unless you actually try to really put the work in. And I think as therapists, we're really often encouraging people that based on their, I guess, like stage of change or that motivation that they have, because um, that's a big thing that I really had to tap into also with some of the clients that I've worked with, is their motivation to change, is mm -hmm. their motivation to also allow there to be a segue that's appropriate to them on figuring out what exactly they're trying to be different with. Um, and I think that change is really scary for people naturally. Like I think 90% of people are really naturally scared of change. So I just encourage them to look at it differently because hmm. I think that alleviates a lot of the concerns like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a, like, so I'm going to change into this other person that I'm not familiar with. It's really more about doing something for yourself that allows there to be a difference in how you feel about it, allowing there to be a way that you're coping with this idea differently. Um, and so that alone, I'm really great at reassuring and even just occasionally incorporating the art into it. I don't always uh, tell a person that they have to do the artwork. I just always encourage that they just look at the art differently, look at what the process might mean for them differently. Um, and I'm really honing in on that word because I'm not telling them or forcing anyone to change per se, but I'm really encouraging that art could be a really great way for them to just view the world with a different perspective, if that makes sense. It does. And I really like how you framed it there. If someone were to say, I'm not, I'm not a good artist, for instance, you're trying to reframe that and instead of, Instead of believing what you're not, believe what you can be. And I, I love how you frame that where uh, so many people do have that block and I'm not, and then dot, 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 you fill in the blank. I'm not good enough. I'm not, no one likes me. There's something wrong with me. I'm not a good artist. And, and so instead of focusing on what you're not, try to be thinking about what can be, what could be. And I love that, that the openness being opening to new possibilities and just enjoy, try to enjoy the process. In this. Exactly. I think also what's really helped a lot of the work that I do with others, whether it's in a group setting or individually, if one of the activities that I've done in the past is that I've taught a group of people who weren't familiar with painting. I introduced them to something called a still life. A still life is one of those paintings that you see where you have, like a table setting and you have like a vase and you have a bowl of fruit and you have all these other things um, like flowers incorporated. 
um, or a pitcher, like a wine bottle, whatever it may be. And when I introduced them this concept of a still, I feel like, oh my God, why are you expecting us to do something so grand? This is like for professionals or for people who are actually artists. And what I explained to them is there are so many different techniques and you don't even really realize what you have going for you unless you really put it out there, what you would want to know more about. So if a person, let's say, comes into a therapy session saying, I want to be more open-minded, um, not even with involving art, but you hear someone saying, I want to be more open-minded, but I, I just have all of these insecurities or thoughts behind why I may not like this thing or this concept. It's really about introducing them to how also in some ways other people have finessed that style. So what I do is I introduce them to other artists, like a wide variety of artists. When I do this activity with the still life, I show them how all of these artists do something visually beautiful. You could all agree that something about their painting or their approach to a still life is stunning. And so when something clicks with you and how you really might feel about it, there's a really unique way that something about that feels inspiring. And then you put your own touch on it just naturally. And I've seen that countless amount of times. And that's what brings me a, a lot of the joy in knowing that I'm really sharing that resource with them. And so when they do see that there's other styles, it's kind of like us therapists that there's so many styles and techniques to therapy. Uh, there's, you know, like the CBT, the DBT, there's uh, mindfulness. Uh, there's also with substance use, like the relapse prevention, motivational interviewing. And there's so many ways that we could incorporate a lot of those approaches amongst each other because everything really connects to one another. Wouldn't you agree on that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that connection is vital no matter what, uh, what type of therapy it is. But I can see how here you mentioned and talked about that you introduced other artists and, uh, to people and you're wanting to, them to make a connection with the artist, perhaps maybe for the first time, or they've never really thought about making that connection with, with their creativity. You know, we talked about uh, art therapy is all about expressing your, your creativeness. And even for people who don't feel like they're creative, they have Correct. it in them and, and to find that connection with others who are creative, like a professional artist, for instance, what is it that you can find and, and, and feel a connection with? And then how do you then translate that in your own life? Correct. And I think it's really allowing there to be a sense of relatability and also accountability. Um, when you notice how a person, let's say that you admire an artist and how they went about this style and technique of their artwork and you want to learn more about it, but then you notice that you would maybe do things differently and you just naturally come up with how you do it differently. And you know, I think with that being said, it's really interesting how we come to those own, to that translation on our own. I don't sit there and tell them that, oh, there's something you could do about this portion of the artwork that you did, or like, I would maybe do that differently. No, we don't go on saying that at all. It's part of their own natural process. Even just like how we think about things, let's say with anger management, when we think about something that makes us so typically angry, and then we allow that creative outlet, not even just the outlet, but just thinking creatively and thinking differently about what has made us angry it allows us to then, you know, naturally progress to the way we think about things will naturally allow us to react and act on something as well. So I think with that being said, there's a way to hold yourself accountable when you really tap into something like creativity or using art therapy on how you would just come to your own place with that, I guess, topic or that theme. Like, you know, with anger management, like I was saying, a lot of people really have their own reservations about managing their anger. But when you just think about what's, like even just the term anger differently, that it's a natural emotion that could evoke a lot of different responses, there's something nice about that in a way where you're like, yeah, I can relate to that. I can relate to being angry, but not 
feeling like I'm so volatile. I just want, I wouldn't want to be volatile. I'd want to tap into that anger in a way that can maybe be passion or uh, compassion or even something uh, such as I want to put all this focus and energy that I'm angry about into something that could be more constructive. So that sublimation is really great in there too, you know? Um, yeah. So I think with that being said, it's just really easy to fall into a cycle that has always been familiar. But then when you think about something creatively and you do something that's creative, it naturally allows there to be a different progression and it changes the cycle of things for sure. I like that. And, and you brought up uh, anger management and I'm mainly thinking about what, what are some other examples? Like how, how would you say art therapy or is there a particular client or a particular struggle that someone may be going through that art therapy might be in particularly helpful for, or because you brought up art or anger management, I think that's great, but are, are there other examples and other issues that people struggle with that art therapy would be helpful for? Yes. And I do really want to stress that one of the misconceptions that we get is that um, art's very juvenile. So we typically only work with children, which is not the case. Um, we, I myself have worked with everyone from being a child or an adolescent in a school setting to then working with their parents and giving support to how they're managing some of the anxieties with their children, then just working individually with adults. A lot of the adults that I've worked with um, are either have like more severe mental illness or like maybe are developmentally delay. A lot of them also then are either veterans that have that PTSD who I've worked with. And also uh, the substance use population is a huge um, population that for me, I noticed right away that every lifespan or other source of community or population, there's always substance use involved. Whether it's a child who has a mother who, or a parent who is an alcoholic, whether the parent themselves has that history of substance use or just being exposed in their communities with the drug epidemic, whether it's also then uh, someone who was in combat, like I said, there is a history of that as well. And then also the geriatrics, um, older adults who then have, let's say, um, some kind of effect from substance use down their history as well. But even just bringing up how children get affected from that um, is a big thing, whether the child is, um, the parent was drinking or doing some kind of drug while they were pregnant with them, or while they were just so exposed to that environment. Um, and it also doesn't discriminate. And I say that. And the reason why I say that is because art therapy doesn't discriminate in many respects either. So depending, like, doesn't matter what community or what environment or what struggles you have, art therapy is really such a beautiful resource. And I, I do really want to stress that people could find art therapy or therapists who really like really call themselves art therapists like myself. Um, there's really beautiful ways to tap into that. And I do encourage that um, after this segment, people really look into that more because whether they're going through something or they even need a group, having group work and doing workshops and events that I've done tremendously. Part of my specialty is doing group work. Um, so I do really want to stress that one of the clients that I've worked amongst was in a nonprofit, which was supportive housing, which meant that I would go to their facility. I would work alongside them. And this is also in New York, by the way, in New York City, um, which has, I don't know how it is in other states. Like I, I remember you saying you're from Missouri, so I'll tap into that in a second. Communities make a big deal when it comes to their vision of what art is. And I think that's part of something that I want to stress as well, because you might have someone like me come in and I have a plethora or like all these things that I'm excited to share with them. Um, but I always have to be really mindful of what am I stepping into? Where am I stepping into? Who am I, you know, coming alongside with? Um, and I think I'm answering this in this kind of way because art therapy is really something that can be utilized in such a non-invasive way. And that's a big deal when it comes to finding a group or a resource that's therapeutic to you. So yes, it is therapy in many of the circumstances, but it's also a therapeutic source. So when you have mental health advocates 
who are trying to figure out ways to really care for themselves and be around those supportive environments and spaces, um, especially like for people who are in sobriety, our therapy is amazing. Um, some of the best work I ever done was with the was within an outpatient substance use population, um, just in that network of places. I'm always really grateful of the people that I work alongside. Like I've worked with um, organizations that gave veterans that access to finding art therapy a source for them. Um, but I also think it has to do with like an individual style of how they are as an art therapist. Like what is something that they really want to share with these places and populations? So I think that makes a big difference in how art therapy is utilized for sure. Like finding a person within your agency or within your environment or community that really wants to hone in those amazing qualities of art therapy for sure. I hope I answered that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, not, and just a follow-up question from that is what would, uh, and you mentioned working with uh, veterans and substance abuse and things. What would a typical session look like? Do you have an example of what, what exactly does an art therapy session look like for, I guess it doesn't have to be necessarily someone who's struggling with addiction, but just in general, what would it look like? <laughs> So in general, that's a great question. Um, so in general, there's always, I guess, it depends on what kind of theme or topic you want to bring in um, to a session. And I, I really stress that in group work because whether, let's say, um, not to deviate from this question, but let's say you have a women's group, but these are like grieving mothers, um, you would then think about what the collection of people in that group, what do they have in common? And what are some things that they would really want to uplift each other with? So with these veterans, whether they were in combat in different wars or in different settings and situations, I always try to go in first acknowledging what does everyone have in common with one another, at least one thing, or what is something that a person could feel really good about sharing with the room? Like, let's say it's just like how to navigate being back in society. That's a huge deal. Um, coming from this setting where their job was to really protect, you know, in many ways or to be in combat and then to come back and have to not unlearn, but to really address when they're feeling some kind of um, that residual trauma that they had in those settings. That's a big common theme that I could think of, for example. So when I worked with veterans, one of the things I would do with them I love doing things that are hands-on and knowing that a lot of these veterans are also men and people that identify with that masculine understanding of what they could do with their hands. Um, I bring in a lot of things that they feel really good with. So I actually did a lot of incorporation with like uh, threading certain knot work. A lot of them remembered a lot of those um techniques, even something like sewing. I've heard so many of them say, oh, my grandma would be so proud of me that I'm learning <laughs> how to sew. And it's just really, it's so endearing because this is something that's so harmless, but it's bringing so much joy and it's bringing so much of um, that pure understanding of like, this is what you still have in front of you. And this is what you could really access. This is where the nearest store could be or the dollar store, which is every art therapist. <laughs> Go to is a dollar store, um, whether they do crafting or some kind of painting or just any kind of art because it's so accessible. So a typical session would be more about focusing on a theme or a topic that someone or the group would like to really collect with. I think for me, it's really also looking at something that's really worked in my favor is looking at them as more than just a veteran. They are individuals who have so much going for them, who are really eager to put that part of them on the side and to explore new aspects. Like how does it feel maybe to be a new father? How does it feel to be like a brother again? Or how does it feel to be a relative that hasn't spoken to, let's say this cousin or like they love animals when they were maybe on reserve, they saw all these animals and there's so many ways to tap, you know, to forget about those parts of you. So for me, what I love to do is I love to really give them more to focus on aside from just honing in like, yeah, you're a veteran, but there's a lot more to that. So I do activities that really allow them to focus on that theme and topic. Um, I bring a lot of resources like 
the painting where they'll always come in and say, you know, miss, I'm really not a painter. I don't know if I even like painting. And it's like, well, you're going to find out how (laughs) you're going to really take that notion. And you know what, then you could tell me if you really don't like it, that's more power to you. And we don't have to do it in these kind of settings. Um, But I really want you to utilize like what you have in your hands and like really be very forthcoming about your actions and like how you take on I guess that new responsibility, let's say with macrame, macrame is like those, um, that knot work that you see, it looks like a spider web, but Mm -hmm. you have it in some kind of, um, a circular pattern, or you can make a basket out of it. So when I did macrame with some of these, um, people, they loved it because it reminded them of all the arithmetic knot work. It was very, it was good for dexterity. It was great for them being just really mindful and focused that, you know, I do this and then I move on to this like thread and then I move on to that thread and um all of those are great processes but not everyone does that a lot of the a lot of our therapists will do um mask work which is a very popular one um activity to do as an art therapist for veterans because it's focusing on two sides of your personality and who you are um so that's something to also think about I think everyone just does things a little differently so having a typical session for me at least is more about honing in on the themes and topics that people just really want to gather and share together. Well, that's really interesting. And it's, uh, you, you painted a really good picture of what an example. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Pun intended. Actually not, but now I'm thinking about, yeah, so it's pun intended. Um, but you, you painted a really good picture of what a, a kind of a typical, session might be like for you and and you pointed out that it may not be necessarily the same for all art therapists but the central theme that i'm picking up here is helping individuals tap into their creative expression through right. art and they may not even realize that they have creative expression until they are actually doing the art and it sounds like a lot of people come to that realization oh you know, in the process of doing the thing that they didn't think they could do, but the process itself led them to discovery. Absolutely. And I think also it really taps into other aspects of who they are. Um, They might choose a color that they might normally not gravitate to as silly as that might sound. Then they'll say, like, just in passing, they'll be like, oh, my sister really loves this color. I wonder how she's doing. Um, Or they might come to a design and they'll say something like, oh, my grandfather was an artist and I feel like he would be really proud of how I made this art piece. Um, And it just kind of gives people in some way like a way to connect with what's around them and who's associated with them as well. Um, I think it's really huge to have creative expression be so acknowledged if that makes sense because like you said not everyone really recognizes that they're creative just in general people are also creative with humor and people are creative with um their jokes or they can be creative with i don't know just like the kind of things that they tap into even technology people are so creative with that um so i think really just allowing someone like myself who's an art therapist but also someone who really kind of gets where you find these moments that are untapped and giving that resource to people. Um, That's really, I think resourcefulness and creativity are really what fueled me every day. So I think it's, I'm such a big believer in making sure that when I connect with someone, that's part of what I want to share and give away as my appreciation for them coming to me and finding that they could really relate to what I'm introducing to them just like you would do in your own therapy sessions mm-hmm. like you're introducing mm-hmm. some of these thoughts and concepts that maybe work for you and your own mental health and you would want to share how not necessarily how it works exactly with you but you could in some ways practice that sympathy and empathy in such a range of ways you know yeah absolutely i love that well our time is coming to a close here and right. it's, it's just been a really pleasure uh talking with you and learning more about art therapy and what you do to help people with their mental health 
But before I let you go, I do have one last question. So this is a question I ask a lot of my, my guests, and that's about self-care. I'm always interested in learning what people do for their self-care. I talk about it all the time, the importance of it, how often we neglect self-care. But I, I'm really interested in what are, what's some of the self-care that you do? Such a great question. I have noticed that you bring that up a lot, um, just like with your own, not necessarily content, but things that you're equally excited about. So it's really appreciated that you asked me about that. And I think there's also a misconception that even as an art therapist, I don't always do my own artwork. I think I sometimes in many ways neglect that more than I should, but I love art. And so when I do even something like crafting, like the DIY, which is stands for do it yourself. I don't know if everyone knows that by the way, but <laughs> when I do something that's visual for myself, um, when I also look at something that could give me a lot of joy, um, when it comes to my self care, I have to really ask myself, what am I taking care of in this moment? Am I taking care of my anxiety? Am I taking care of my sadness? Am I taking care of my bats of energy that have just come out of nowhere? Um, that's where I identify with that first. And I think for me, well, I don't think, I know that for me, I have to be very aware of what makes sense to do for myself. If it's just listening to music and dabbling with uh, doodle art or just like doing something that feels a little mindless, but is mindful, that could be great for relaxation. If it's something that I want to do for energy wise, like preserving, but also putting that into a form, I go for a walk, um, knowing that the environment that I'm in is really safe. Um, so, but I think, I think first really identifying with what it is that you're taking care of is a huge component. Um, because it's not necessarily that going for a walk helps in every situation. If you're feeling lazy, are you really going to want to go for a walk? That's not always the case. Um, but if you're feeling as if you have a lot of energy, but you also need to put your headspace somewhere that's allowing you to be more, I guess, centered, listen to music while you go for a walk or have, you know, someone next to you that you feel good with. It could even be your dog and like just doing something that you know is important for you, like going for a walk. Um, so I think that's how I really identify with self-care these days. I, I hope that definitely relates to you as well and anyone else viewing this. For sure. Yeah, I, I love that. And and you really express the importance of being intentional uh, with your self-care, not just doing random things, but being intentional about it. And I, I really like that. So thank you for sharing that with us. And uh, so I want to thank all of you for listening or if you're watching this, uh, really appreciate you. If you're new, I would love for you to follow the Mental Health Today show wherever you, you follow shows, whether it's YouTube or uh, your your uh, podcast app. I really appreciate you. And I want to encourage you to continue to work on your mental health. Maybe part of that is looking into art therapy, what we just yes. talked about today. So how do you like that little plug? I love that. I think that <laughs> was one of the best things you could have done. You know, just if you're interested in something and you feel like it could be a great asset for yourself, do that search go into it and see where you can really find that and tap into it for sure. I'm always so grateful for that. Yeah. Thank you again, John. Yeah, you bet. I appreciate you coming on the show and for sharing your expertise and your passion. And, and I'm sure people who are listening appreciate that as well. Thank All you right, friends, thank you so me. much. And I'm going to let you go. And as always, I want you to continue to work on your mental health. And until next time, bye-bye.